Namaskar. On behalf of Indian Classical Music Circle, ICMC, I heartily welcome you all to today's session. We are extremely delighted and glad to have the true torchbearers and direct descendants of the most distinctive and premier music families of Indian classical music whose ancestors are literally considered and respected as the deities, emperors, and saints of music. Contribution of these two lineages, <clears throat> as we call gharana in, in the uh, Indian classical music terminology, their contribution in building and establishing the current landscape and vocabulary of Indian classical instrumental music is immense and immeasurable. This is being highly acknowledged and remembered with great reverence by the entire music fraternity today and always. Musicians, students, and followers of Maihar Senia Gharana and Imdad Khani Itawa Gharana are the highest in number for several decades by now. Let me welcome Alam Khan our very dear alam bhai, son and disciple of Ustad Ali Akbar Khan sahab. Alam bhai, happy, happy welcome to you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Namaskar. Namaskar. And Hidayat Hussain Khan, our very own Hidayat bhai, son and disciple of the legendary star maestro Ustad Vilayat Khan sahab. Hidayat bhai, welcoming you again in ICMC. Thanks so much, Ram bhai, as always. Pleasure to be here and, and have wonderful conversations with you. And, and so looking forward to talking to Alam Bhai this time. So Alam Bhai, so if, if you could say a few words to start with on how you are feeling today to join this session and few words about this particular initiation, initiative of ICMC where we are trying to remember uh, the great legends of our Indian classical music to always get remain inspired please yeah well i'm i'm pleased to be here thanks for inviting me rambai um you know i think it's uh important to um be authentic be honest and uh have the um history be written you know in a way that's 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 truthful you know and and i think that having an inside peek at the lives of these, uh, you know, um, an intimate peek into the lives of these of these maestros, um, told by Hidayat Bai and myself, um, is great for the future, and for everyone that's curious now, um, and to uh, let people uh, know in our generation and younger um, what the the magic that the, the that these maestros created, and talk a little bit about that. That's wonderful, Alam Bai. Thank you. And Hidayat Bhai, if you could say a few words, how you are feeling today after joining this session and the initiative of ICMC as you have been to uh, previous sessions with ICMC before. So if you could say a few words about that. Uh, as always, it's a pleasure and, and to see the work that you're doing is really, really wonderful. And, and uh, as Alam Bhai also mentioned, that it's very important to have uh, authentic and honest uh, uh, information out there and, and your platform is really doing a wonderful job at that and getting uh, the right people uh, to uh, communicate their stories and, and uh, stories of Indian classical music and uh, keep it real, you know, uh, as opposed to create this legend around Indian classical music, uh, which is um, something that, that it's, not, it's nice because our, our um, backgrounds are improvisation and flattery and, and stuff, but we take that to an extent where it becomes almost impossible for the next generation to follow and and they get so disillusioned with that because um as great as our fathers and forefathers fathers were they were human beings and um and and they had uh, multiple personalities and and the lives that they led were very normal in many ways also so it's very important for this, this generation to see that they were humans and and they did human things 
they were not superhumans that were flying from building to building or, or, or uh, uh, you know, uh, eradicating cancer with one ton or, you know, things like that. <laughs> so, so, it's, uh, so, so I'm really grateful and thankful for you to sort of give us this platform that we can talk about uh, what we saw, you know, and, and our experiences. What I, what I must say is this platform is all yours, both of yours. So whenever you want, just drop a message over WhatsApp or Messenger and this and please come online and we will just need some time to circulate the message to the audience, wider audience. <clears throat> um, the unfortunate thing is uh, our music world is so you know rich and the entire world worships our music and musicians, but our mainstream media if we call uh, you know television a newspaper they are only after other things um like cricket bollywood and other stuff um, uh, politics uh, unfortunately the names of the great musicians and their stories their contributions uh, hardly come come into the into the mainstream media so once we are having a small tool in our hand like internet connection and some smartphone or laptop we should uh, do the utilization of that uh, for the service of this music uh, the music uh, which we worship we all worship um, if we consider our music world as the solar systems and we the music worshipers as the small planets revolving around the sun you both are probably the closest planets to the sun suns we're on fire <laughs> I can understand. I can. I can understand. For us, like the students, uh, uh, moment in moments in our life when we attended their concerts, met them in person, and touched their feet, are one of the most glorious and melodious moments of our life. We and for you, you, you both, you have spent countless such moments in your life played on their laps, got fundled by them, got lessons of life, lessons of music and lessons of philosophy from the closest proximity. Today, how do you want to recall those moments? So if, you, if I can ask this question to Alambe first, then I will come to Hidat. How do you describe a lifetime? Um, you know, the when you were speaking, um, <clears throat> the word that came to mind was um, blessed and grateful. Um, because to so many, you know, uh, my father was, like you were saying, godlike. And he was in many, in many ways, <sighs> musically, you know, um, but he was my father. And um, I had a, a regular relationship or I don't know what regular means but I had a um, father-son relationship as well as um, Guru Shishya so I mean you know it sometimes those lines got blurred and it was hard to um, separate them um, what I am very thankful one of the things I'm very thankful to for my father was that he didn't want to have the same relationship with me that he had with his father and he was very loving and affectionate and, and, and sweet. Honestly, my mom was the taskmaster more than my father was because he was always going on tour and doing this and that. And when he'd come back home, it was like, you know, he'd buy us presents and different things. And, 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 and Baba could do, my father could do no wrong, um, which, you know, as I grew up, obviously, and now I can, I can see uh, that it's not that he could do no wrong. It's that he wasn't the taskmaster, so I was never mad at him. He never put me on timeout. He never scolded me or disciplined. I mean, he did to an extent, but that was really my mother more. Um, but I'm just really grateful that I got to have such a loving relationship with him. And that's something that he missed out in his life. And a lot of people look at it like a movie or a book when they read about his 18 hours a day of practicing for 20 years and being beaten and tied to a tree and people want to write all this stuff and talk about all this all the time. But I don't think that many people really, really grasp the magnitude of what that does to a young 
boy, uh, a young person and their mind forming in this world, in this reality. And so for my father, I remember what he said, or if it was to me or to my mother, I don't remember, but he said that he never saw his father's eyes until he looked at a picture of him years later when he was more grown up. And that's a very serious thing. It's a, it's a bit um, sad. Uh, it's a bit traumatic. It's a lot of things. He had a very militaristic life growing up. And, you know, when you look at it, that's what created, um, you know, uh, Ustad Ali Akbar Khan. That's what yeah. created that, that kind of relationship, militaristic training, all the things that created the maestro that we all are so fortunate to have and the music and all that thing. But what about the person? What about the boy? You know, that's a very serious thing. So my father never wanted that relationship with me. He didn't force me to play, but when I did, he got, uh, he encouraged and was of course the strictness, he got more strict as it went on and my seriousness uh, developed and whatnot. But uh, he didn't want that relationship. He wanted a loving relationship. He said to me that his father did love him, but it was through the music. And that years later, when uh, you know he was older, he would hear things like his father would always ask people, "Go check on, go check on him, go check on him, make sure he's okay." And it was always concerned about his well-being, what was going on, but didn't directly show that. And um, I mean, it's olden times; it's a certain type of uh, upbringing, a certain type of char character, uh, personality. Um, it's old school, um, and it did make my father into the man he was, but. Um, so could you, should you have taken any of that away? I, I don't know the answer to that, but all I can say is that I didn't have that relationship with him. I'm obviously not my father, um, musically or otherwise, but, um, I'm just grateful to have that connection and so much love from him. I know my father just said I wanted to be loved by my father, but he didn't get that directly. And I did. And so for me, um, I saw that side of him so much and he had so much love to give. And he was such a sweet man and, and kind man and balanced man, regardless of what a, uh, insane upbringing he had, right? So that's, yeah. that's all I have to say at the moment. So we can correlate with his music also, whatever he was saying, like loving, affectionate, balance, and you know, touching. So all those, uh, that connection we can uh, make. Yeah, you know, it, it was, um, he also, he told me, um, one time that uh, I don't I don't cry in real like in in, in tears visibly. Um, he says I cry when I play. I cry inside when I play. And he said, you know, my father said to me, real music, pure music, powerful music. It's the kind of music that when the musician is done playing, the audience forgets to clap, and tears just come out. Terrible. So that is missing a lot from this time period nowadays. It seems to be that we're in the entirely the opposite end of things and people feel uncomfortable if people don't start clapping. That's the way that we know that things are being transferred. But that sort, that, that kind of approach to things or philosophy about things is what my father had, what my grandfather had, what, what I have. Um, and that's different than kind of the current climate amongst a lot of musicians which, uh, you know, un unfortunately, sometimes is more on a surface level. But anyway, I mean, talking about feeling and, and all those kinds of things, this was very much a very strong theme uh, of the power of ragas, the power of music in one note, and the emotion it can bring out. And um, yeah, it's, it's intense stuff, heavy stuff. We'll gradually uh, get to know about more aspects and more dimensions to this throughout this conversation today. Um, so if I can uh, request the same question to Hidayat Bhai, um, how do you recall the days and time that you spent with Abba? Um, you know, it's uh, it's amazing. Um, Alam Bhai is talking about uh, his growing up years, his upbringing, his connection with his father and his mother. And uh, it's like somebody's reading my book. Uh, <laughs> uh, exact same um, uh, emotions, exact same uh, experiences uh, from having to begin with, like, I mean, 
Ali Bar Khan Sahib had a father uh, who he had a relationship with of whatever sorts, whereas Abba uh, lost his father at a very, very young age. Uh, but it wouldn't have been a very different relationship. Uh, it would have been a very similar sort of a relationship. And even the years that Abba had him as a young boy, you hear uh, these very grueling uh, stories, um, which, as again, Alam Bhai said, sound very glorified and, and uh, in, in books and everything. But we, uh, for a musician and, and those thought that he's, he became, but um, if you look at it from a perspective of a little boy and, and how traumatic and how difficult uh, that must have been for him, that uh, he experienced in the first 10 years of his life, or, uh, you know, um, and then he lost his father. And thankfully so, or um, that the relationship that, um, that he was able to build with me was uh, of a lot of love, a uh, lot of care um, and uh, uh, the musical moments were obviously it was uh, again it's difficult to sometimes uh, go between the guru and, and the shishya and the father and the son uh, relationship the lines get blurry um, it gets uh, difficult um, but then there was a way he managed that there was a way that he connected with that uh, he encouraged conversations uh, whereas i even hear about my peers uh, that, that learn from abba have such different uh, experiences where it was a one-way uh, street one-way uh, talim he said this you do that whereas in my um, time it wasn't that it was a conversation it, it was uh, we were encouraged to ask questions we were encouraged to understand um, what the idea was whether and how music was related to life uh, how uh, uh, I'm, I'm basically repeating what alam bhai said in, in every which way because he spoke so eloquently and beautifully and i mean um, the emotion that when you talk about um, the feelings that that people derive out of music are it, it, the hardest thing to crack is your heart and the hearts of people and if you're able to reach out to people's heart, that's what music is. Um, it's not a um, jugglery act where you have to do something and, and people have to feel a sense of, ah, oh, clap at the end of it, wow, uh, beautiful. Uh, whereas if something really truly touches your heart and your emotion, um, you're almost stunned. You're almost have an out of body experience where you're not even there. Um, so these are the kind of conversations, these are the kind of exposures um, that I uh, had with Abba from day one. I mean, I, I honestly can't remember uh, not having these conversations. Uh, sometimes they were way uh, beyond my understanding and, and he would still have these conversations because he would say that, that uh, music is something that you don't, do from your conscious mind you do it from your subconscious mind and he says i'm not talking to your conscious mind i'm talking to your subconscious mind and uh, all the information i'm that giving you consciously you're not being able to grab is because of the way society has become because of the way the environment has become we are closed to so many things but your subconscious mind is is always there and when you start listening to that intuition uh, that gut feeling, and, and there is a reason why you played the madham in a certain way in a rag, you know, or how much time you spent on that madham. That is your intuition, that is your subconscious mind talking to you, and, and that is all coming from years and years and years of conversations and, and uh, you know, moments that you've had uh, with uh, such people. And, and yes, um, uh, they are humans, but they are godlike humans because uh, in music, um, the awareness and the sensibility that they were able to create and from music in their lives uh, was just uh, remarkable. Um, yeah, I, I, that that's. Um... Yeah, Lumbay, yeah. 
no, no, that's that. I mean, that's 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 exactly that's how I feel too. That's exactly how I feel. I mean, we were very fortunate to have these kinds of relationships with with our fathers and see the 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 men, the the people behind um, the music and 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 like Hidayat by saying, they were planting seeds. The subconscious mind. I like how you said that because it's not. I'm not talking to the conscious mind. I mean, of course. Some of it's the conscious mind, but the subconscious mind is planting the seed that in years time will grow. And how many of us can speak to that, that we something came out that that we don't know where it came from. And of course, it came from some some prior teaching or accumulation of things like that. So, mm -hmm. you know, there's a, a funny story. Um, uh, I had started playing star for a few years and um, Abba was going to start teaching me Marva. And uh, so I had maybe a little bit Talim on Marva, Marva. And I created a composition that I thought I created. And I would tell all the students and everyone around me that, you know, here is this composition. Learn it from me. And I'm playing Marva and everything. And, and Abba and the senior students would encourage that. Uh, that, okay, Deko Hidayat made such a nice composition. Learn everything. Acha, very nice. How, you know? And, and later, um, nobody ever told me that that wasn't my composition. That was a buzz composition. I, I honestly don't remember ever learning it from him. I don't remember um, hearing it from him in a concert or something like that. But it's that conversation with the subconscious mind. At somewhere, it's not that I dreamt it and, and, uh, or I have this spiritual connection with my father or I'm the torchbearer that he talks to me in such a way. No, it's he had this conversation with me with my subconscious mind at a very young age and that's probably where it came from that idea or that was set in there and i just didn't realize it where it was coming from so i thought it was mine so these kind of things uh, happen so often uh, and, and uh, as we grow up we start realizing that there's a bigger voice that's talking it's not necessarily ours or it is our voice connecting with the bigger voice but it, these are the subconscious um, elements and these are the seeds that have been planted. Uh, at least in, 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 in you know, exactly what Alam Bhai said, it's just it's so funny that, that um, and, and it's kind of bizarre that, you know, how uh, we really haven't uh, spent much time together. Um, uh, our fathers are uh, weirdly similar and, and the kind of love uh, that they and respect that they have for each other is is i mean is universally known and uh, so it kind of makes sense that our upbringing also has been weirdly similar <laughs> true true <laughs> and their upbringing was also similar based on uh, their parents were also very hard taskmaster and uh, hours and hours of practice and uh, if we see like these two instruments sitar and sarod as the world says today Sitar was meant for Ustad Vilayat Khan Sahib and Sarut was meant for Ustad Ali Akbar Khan Sahib. The kind of changes, uh, physical changes in the instrument um, and the probably none of us are, you know, uh, are in position to say all these things because we are not qualified enough to talk about their greatness. But through your eyes, if we can get um, some glimpses of their greatness, that will be a great achievement for us. Um, so your uh, like uh, the earliest memories of your lessons, if if you can uh, share with us, Alam Bhai. Um, well, when I started, it was vocal music, um, I was a little boy, and of course, I would sit in the class at the Ali Akbar College of Music here in California, mm -hmm. and I would just sing along, or something. Who knows? As a little boy space out or hum along or something but before that i mean as i'm sure hidayat bai can also uh, same with him the night before i was born or maybe it was a couple nights before uh pandit ji pandit ravi shankar and my father were doing a duet in uh, san francisco i believe i think abba ji was playing tabla and my mom was in the front row um and uh, I was just kicking away. She was pregnant and I was kicking away at this Jugal Bundy, just ready to come out. So I was listening to music like this from before I was even born, right? Truly, in the Jugal Bundy myself, let me out. 
Uh, and <laughs> I was born the next day or two days after that or something like that. So then naturally vocal music. And then when I was about seven, uh, I got a small uh, sorod from, from Heyman Babu. And um, either my father or Ashish Da, my oldest brother, uh, I forget, either my father was gone and if so, it was Ashish Da or maybe it was my father. Someone said that and confused my memory years ago. And I was like, oh, okay, I don't remember what it is exactly. Point is, I had little teeny stickers, those little office stickers, those little teeny ones, right? The dots. And they put them on the sarod for Balawal Tot. So the way I started Sarod was playing on the stickers, uh, the level thought. And I'm doing the same thing with the young boy right now. I'm teaching him and we put stickers on his Sarod as well. Actually, since it's, everything is virtual, his father had to put the stickers over the camera. <laughs> because you don't have parda for Fritz, uh, unlike Sitar. Yeah. yeah, no. So that that's the thing. That that's that's the mis that's another misconception too, is everybody thinks that Sitar is easy. And I'm like, it's probably because of the Beatles and George Harrison and Ravi Shankar and the guitar and sitar are like the same instrument and they're just so not the same instrument at all. It's basically like, yes, dunk, 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 great. As soon as you start doing mean or anything, you're just in a whole nother universe and you're doing the same thing as Sorod, but you're pulling instead of sliding. So yeah. I never really got that. It's like, cool, yeah, if you never want to get beyond preschool sitar wise, then sure, it's an easier instrument, go ahead. But as soon as you want to graduate to the next class, kindergarten, it's uh, in the same boat as Sarod, and yeah. they both have their own uh, difficulties. Yep, yep. But anyway, so I started with Sarod that way. I played for, you know, off and on, picking it up, putting it down. Uh, when I was a teenager, uh, around 13, 14 possibly is when it really struck me, and I picked it up, and I didn't stop that time. I would pick it up, I'd take classes, lessons, not do some riyas, then kind of stop. I got into guitar. My father and mother bought me electric guitar, and uh, I love to play along to grunge music from Seattle, like Nirvana, uh, Pearl Jam, Alice in Chains, all these bands. They were my favorite bands. Um, and uh, so my father was encouraging of any kind of music. Even he'd say, bring down your guitar. He'd be sitting at the, di the dinner table. I'd bring it down. I'd play something that I'm learning. Um, I even took lessons from one of his students that he was teaching vocal to. They were guitar players, so they were teaching me guitar. I was learning oh. Jimi Hendrix songs and all kinds of stuff, and my father would play sometimes and mess around. He'd come in the room sometimes and say, that's bar this, that's a Barvi scale. You can't play it at this time. I'm like, but it's guitar. I mean, <laughs> you know, which is something I, I definitely follow very strictly the times of day. But... Um, Guitar, yeah, it was. That's how I did it, and then all of a sudden, I started listening to my father's music, and I started hearing it in a way that almost encapsulated all of the feelings and moods and places the music brought me of of, of all the other music I was listening to at the time, whether it was rock or it was hip hop or pop music or whatever it was, Western classical, whatever. When I listened to my father playing, all of a sudden it clicked, and it felt like it was like an old friend or family and I recognized that that sound and I, I I heard it for years but it never it never clicked I would fall asleep in concerts when I was a child and wake up during the jala you know that's classic right I just sitting there in the audience and pass out and wake up during the jala miss so many good concerts I have to listen to them on recording now but I think that's also what happens with a lot of new listeners is when they're not really it's not resonating with them they're just not ready to hear it yet I wasn't ready to hear it yet. Some people will say it made me tired and sleepy. That's good. It should. That means it's relaxing you. That's the first way it's making its way into your, your body. And it's, causing, it's giving you peace. Then you start to appreciate. And then all the wonder and magic of it, you know, uh, is uncovered. So for me, uh, I heard it finally. And once I did, it really never left me. And it haunted me for my whole life in, in a good way haunted me in a good way i'd think about everything all the phrases all the notes and the depth it took me to and it's just everything that i enjoyed in the other music i found in my father's recordings in the sound of sarod and that's when i was like i want to play this music my mother also tricked me uh and she said she wanted to study sarod so she got a sarod and we started taking class together and practicing 
and maybe she wanted to study it a little bit because my mom's very adventurous with instruments. She'll play cello, and then she studied tabla for 25 years with Abba G and Zakir G and and Shapun G. Um, and she she, but anyway, um, maybe she wanted to learn a little bit. But I think she wanted to also get me playing again. And so that time, I'd already picked it up and put it down many times. Um, that time, I felt like me and my mother are doing this together, and let's play. And then all of a sudden, everything I'd learned before was just helping me accelerate faster, faster going. And then slowly, I saw my mom kind of go into the back and then forget it. <laughs> She's like, I'm not playing Sarod anymore. Go. And I never stopped. So it was a combination of that, hearing the music and having it resonate. Maybe I was just at the right age at the right time. And uh, I never stopped. And it's, it's, it's you know, the love of my life, this music. And um, I'm very grateful that I, that I was able to hear the call. And when I heard the call, this is where we are now. Wonderful, wonderful memories and experience. So, uh, Hidat Bhai, as I know that you started, Abba initiated uh, you with the singing first, and then you, uh, you know, started sitar. So, if you could just, you know, share s some stories and how it uh, went forward. Again, uh, uh, reading my script. <laughs> <laughs> I think the next question I will Sorry. ask you first before Alam <laughs> Yeah, I think he has a he has a script or something there. <laughs> uh, no, but it's 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 uh, it's very very uh, similar. Again, uh, journey started with vocal music. Actually, journey started as he said uh, with me in, in my mom's stomach. I mean, uh, the music she was encouraged to listen to. She was encouraged to play sitar, pick it up. Um, so it, uh, it imbibes in, in in the womb, in the uh, baby. Um, lessons again um I, I i don't remember having uh formal lessons for a very very long time um uh, he would uh, tell us to practice something a uh, few of us students would be sitting together uh, he would come he would say acha sing this palta or practice this palta and then he would walk away and then he'd come back uh, half an hour 45 minutes uh, later and he says, Acha, do you understand why this was like this? Uh, if this was like this, how would you create the next part of it? And then have us uh, uh, create the next part of it and then uh, sort of have a conversation at that very moment um, that why it was very good or why it doesn't work out. Or if there's a senior student sitting amongst us, if he did or she did something that was beyond our capacity, he would uh, say that, you know, it's a wonderful piece that you created, but you have to understand in the context of what you're doing. So if it's not something that the younger uh, students are being able to grasp, it doesn't work. So you have to bring it to the level where everyone can understand. So so a lot of our beginning lessons were uh, sort of in this way. Uh, sitar only uh, came in. So there is a small sitar actually in our house that is about... Mm, trying to get my hands in the, in the camera. It's about um, something that a, a, a four-year-old child grows out of it. And and that sitar has historically been in the house. Uh, I don't know how old it is, but uh, I think everyone, including my father, has uh, uh, played on it. So that goes to show it's a toy. Uh, it's a toy which I uh, recently got uh, uh, repaired and, and restored and and now it's kept as a uh, as a fair family heirloom as a, as, a, as a piece of history but it was actually a toy that was passed around and it's a little mini sitar that uh, uh, that you grow out of when you're about three four years old so um, a two-year-old kid um, in, in in musical families uh, whether it's sitar whether it's sarod whether it's vocal or tabla or everything you'd be surprised at the amount that they are uh, sort of familiar with of music, you know. Um, we, the, the, the games that we have, um, uh, have rhythm, poetry, pandan, me jar, jize, katha, chuna, pan, supari, you know. So things, something like this, uh, and then you sort of play with it and in the rhythmic games of it, or sargams or, or uh, you know. So, uh, our nursery rhymes, uh, 
So by the time we are of a conscious stage, we are already musicians of some sorts, you know. Uh, then when we are in that age group, then comes in um, the seriousness of music. And uh, the seriousness of music uh, was with my father, it was about Riyaz. And uh, he, uh, so when he was teaching us, he was extremely uh, patient. Like, I mean, his philosophy was that if I'm not getting something, it's not my fault, it's his fault in communication. So extremely patient. I mean, the simplest thing, if you're not getting for hours together, I'd, I'd see him with some uh, students and, and just totally patiently and be like, no, beta, don't worry about it. Okay, try it this way or try it this way. Acha, get up, take a break. Go take a break, freshen up, come back. You know, he'll play, try and do whatever he can. Um, but when it came to Riyaz, there was just, I mean, that man would, from this softy, understanding, uh, uh, considerate uh, person, you would turn into this disciplinarian to a level degree. I mean, if, if it was, if we had to play 500 paltas, we had to play 500 paltas. There, I mean, it's not 499. It was the end of that. So I'll tell you a really funny story. Um, I was about. Uh, 14, 15 years, 14 years old, and, and my 15th birthday was coming up. Uh, we were in India, Dehradun at that time. And uh, this was around early, uh, late spring, early summer. And uh, my birthday is end of September. And uh, so we were having a conversation. I don't know how birthdays came up. And he says, what do you want for your birthday? So I told him, uh, like, just it's a fantasy conversation, you know. So I told him I wanted this Jeep. Uh, which uh, had come out in India, which was like a Wrangler replica uh, in India, and it was pretty expensive for that time. And I had no way ever thought that a 15-year-old kid was going to get a brand new Jeep his father would buy him. So I looked at me and says, okay, fine, no worries. I'll buy you the Jeep for, for your birthday. And I was like, seriously? He's like, yeah, seriously. He said, but I have a condition. What? He said, you have to, from now till your birthday, you have to play six hours every day. That is not talim time. That is not thinking time. That is not, that is pure Riyaz, this thing. So I was like, uh, okay. <laughs> I didn't realize what I was stepping into, but I said, okay, I'll do that. But I said, you're going to promise you're going to get me the Jeep. He said, yes, I promise I will get you the Jeep. So we shook hands and it was a deal. And I sat down the entire summer. I practiced for six hours a day. And what that meant, if I got up to go to the bathroom and it, was, uh, it took me a minute and 30 seconds, that would be added to that minute and 30 seconds. So it was six hours of playing. If I stressed my back, it was added to the time. So it was not six hours of playing. It ended up being seven plus hours of doing music. And everything was put aside. This is what I had to do. Guess what? At the end of the summer, my comes my birthday, and there is this brand new Wrangler Jeep sitting in our driveway. I could not believe that he did that. And and I didn't even have a driver's license, you know. I mean, because we lived on a farm and stuff like that, so I knew how to drive, but but I didn't have a driver's license or anything, and I had this Jeep. Um, in India, nobody checked at that time. But the catch was <laughs> Yeah, but <laughs> there was a catch to that. So that was my car. I could do what I want. Like, yes, this is my car. I could tell my friends everything. But he would not give me money to put gas in the car. <laughs> so I would That'll walk. cost you another hour. That'll cost you another hour a day. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I would wash it. I would do everything. Wherever, wherever I would need to go, I would go on my bike. <laughs> <laughs> this is my toy car. Exactly. My father has to drive, and I have no gas. I have no way of exactly. making. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so, so, you said you said I, when I was talking about that, I forgot we were talking about how our actual training. I was talking more about how we got involved in the music. Uh, to jump off of what uh, Hidayat Bai was saying um, <clears throat> about actually learning music, um, <clears throat> same thing. Extremely patient. Uh, 
I learned in two different settings uh, at the college, which was had, you know, anywhere from 20 to 30 people in the classroom at the same time learning together um, uh, or, and at home um, privately, or maybe with one other student that he'd invite over and we would take the lesson together, the two of us. Whenever there was a lesson at home, generally uh, I was always there uh, with whoever, any of his, you know, older older disciples that were visiting or were, you know, needed to have a lesson uh, privately one-on-one -on -one. that took place at home i'd say i benefited tremendously from both but obviously the the private lessons is, were more um were the most impactful and what i got to experience in that was being so close to him and over and over him saying watch with your eyes and listen at the same time watch with your eyes and listen with the same time and listen at the same time and this is what I tell my students now, because my, my point about this is that you're going to be missing so much that's going on. And what I say to people is when you think that you've listened as close as you possibly can, listen closer, because you're missing a lot. I'll listen to old recordings and um, of our lessons, and there will be times where, you know, there's an ornament, whatever, and then I play it back and... I thought at the time probably, yeah, I'm copying the way his hand is going. I'm I'm do, trying to create the tone on listening to what he's saying I'm playing, but I'm just missing things. And I see the same thing when I'm teaching my students, you're just missing these subtleties. It's about like, you know, refining the ear and finding these subtleties. And um, that I got through that, you know, um, intimate setting, one-on-one -on -one learning day in, day out. Well, I wish I would say day in, day out. He probably was more willing to teach me than I had, uh, than I was willing to learn or practice. <laughs> I told him years later um, that, you know, any anything that I didn't learn or fault of that, you know, is probably my own Baba because um, I'm a teenager in America and I was hanging out with my friends and not spending all the time, of course, in hindsight, I wish I'd spend every single moment doing that, but that's not realistic, um, at least not for this day and age and how I was brought up. But very patient teacher, very strict when you got uh, more serious with playing. Um, things were very wrong a lot of the time, um, you know, but he was also supportive and would give you little smirks and smiles on stage and things like that that were like, okay, good, you know, and go on and, and try. But what he taught me, the, um, which, what, I say I think is the most, you know, important and um, you know, uh, evergreen, long-standing, whatever uh, message is to play with feeling, and that is uh, something that, and, and people like to call that tone. They equate that to, uh, to the word tone, which is fine, sure. It's tone, it's touch, it's everything. There's an immense virtuosity in that. People like to think that virtuosity is just doing runs up and down the scale or jala or this or that or speed or if you're shooting a half court shot now instead of, you know, <laughs> basketball, which is happening now, right? Every generation is going to be able to do one more flip than the gymnast the year before, shoot the ball from farther away. But that doesn't change the, the, the baseline, most important thing about what we're doing here, which is feeling and soul. You know, that to me, and to some people, perhaps that they don't enjoy that. They like, they like the thrill and the excitement. And that's, that, that's that. Yeah, that's to each his own. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. To each yeah. his own. Because uh, that's how, that, that's, that's what makes the world an interesting place. But um, when you find uh, like-minded people, uh, or if that's what you're calling is, then you should be true to that. And the way, would, uh, exactly what you were saying, the way Abba would sort of uh, tell us in our music was that he said, uh, if you're having, uh, uh, first of all, there are two kinds of music. One is a fantastically prepared lecture. The other is a conversation. So if you're having a conversation, if you include the audience into your conversation, then you're starting to have a conversation. And that conversation is not scripted. Um, yes, you are leading that conversation, but it really depends uh, on, and, and the three of us are sitting over here, the dynamics of the three of us, our likes and dislikes, our uh, uh, time zones, our weather changes, our food habits, everything. 
has made us come to this uh, place. So the conversation we're having, if I sort of plan today uh, that I'm going to talk about an, uh, an X area of my father's music, and regardless of what you said, I would just go back to that point and do my point and do my point and do my point on that. That's come out somehow what's become of our music. And, and, and as Adam Bhai was saying, talking about tone uh, and, and feeling, it's it's preconceived, right? So if you're, as, we, as you talk, there are certain things you stress upon, there are certain things you, your voice goes deep, some things your voice goes high. That's exactly how the music should be. It should be an extension of your soul uh, and, and the emotion and, and you're being able to communicate that feeling. Sorry, Alam Bhai, I, I, I took over, uh, cut you off. Oh, no, 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 no But no what problem. you said was, uh, you know, it, 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 I'm saying apologizing to you, but at the same time, I don't feel like that and be very honest because what you said was not something that I wanted to cut you off with, but I was inspired by what you said. Uh, no, and so you bring up a good point. Uh, uh, in, in, in conversation that people have, right? Hiran Bhai, we have a couple of feedback that they want your voice a little bit higher. So your voice is a little bit, you know, softer. So, so we are yelling. A couple of Start yelling. No, I was I was speaking from C because of Sarod. Now I'll talk from D. <laughs> Good one. Good on. Um, no, but yeah, no. What you're saying is true, and I even you know started to say that it it is personal preference. I think that um, don't get locked in any one way, and it's subjective. Music is subjective. For me, um, that is the most probably important teaching or the most meaningful one to me. And that's kind of guided me in my own approach, let's say, to playing um, is that's first and foremost. And then everything else is is comes com comes later. You know, the 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 interaction with the tabla player, the, you know, doing things that are exciting, obviously, for audience um, or or just it's an instrument. And it has a range of things to do. So why limit yourself to one thing? But throughout or throughout the whole thing, there can be tone and feeling in tons and in fast playing. It's not it's it's like it's the right it's the most beautiful way of rendering that at whatever you're doing at any point. You can play with feeling with all of it, right? Just yeah. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. But like is it thought out? Is it intelligent? Is it emotional? I mean, it can be in any aspect. So if if I could share a couple of uh, my experiences, um, now also Duvalian music conference is happening. Um, to be honest, after passing of these two great legends, I have stopped going to Duvalian. <laughs> two of my experiences I will share, I think, in consecutive two consecutive years. My experience, once Ustad Ali Akbar Khansahab was playing Ramdasi Malhar and a couple of phrases, I think it was 1997, or something like that. In a couple of phrases, the entire audience from one corner to the other corner and this corner to this corner, everyone is responding. And that response is kind of coming from inside. And the same experience I had with Ustad Vilayat Khan Sahab, uh, the same venue, Nazul Manchit Overland in Vairavi. There are a couple of phrases, the same expression we have observed. But in my lifetime, I have not seen that kind of uh, ex expression from the audience. Everyone is responding in the same way, that haunting effect in music, in, in others' music. Rambhai, it's very... So what is that magical quality? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's very fortunate or unfortunate. You can look at it either ways that that we are born in this era where uh, classical music reached its epitome, and and we have some of the greatest greatest minds of music born at this time. So, uh, so uh, that's the fortunate that we were a part of this and we got to hear this. And the unfortunate is that. Uh, uh, now uh, there's always a little bit of a vacuum or, or uh, after uh, that because they have shown this direction that we all need to first understand then get there and then then take it forward i'm sure uh, uh, somebody in music is something that's beyond one human being it's it's greater than that so people will take this forward but at this time uh, when you've had that experience of uh, listening or, or being in that um, 
zone, that energy sort of field of these musicians, it's really hard um, uh, to get that from anywhere else. I mean, from any so other what is, what is that magical uh, magic moment? What what you know? Uh, how how that magical moment comes? According to you, if I can ask you both. If Alim Bhai can tell me that, then then I'm gonna. <laughs> yeah, yeah, magic <laughs> moment. I don't. I, <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, um, I think. Um, but going back to tone and feel, uh, you can play a thousand notes, so you can play one or two or three notes really in tune and with feeling. I mean, and when I say in tune, I don't mean you pulled up your your pitch pipe or whatever, and it says it's in tune. My father said to me a bunch of times that he felt like he was only really in tune a few times in his life. What I so I'm talking about a deeper philosophical in tune. What that means, I'm saying in tune with the universe. I'm saying in tune, being a channel for this music to come through, um, and 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 just just a note or two can everything can be encapsulated. The whole universe can be encapsulated if we want to get profound and stuff like that in a few notes. So I mean, yeah, you can play a bunch of them to get there, or you could play one or two or one phrase, and then also on. So that's one thing, you know, and it's it goes straight to your heart. The other thing is um, being in a space as a listener. Um, I think that also paints the picture quite a bit for a lot of things of the context. I mean, when you're listening to music and something's not contrived or preconceived and you can feel like the musician is on a journey themselves discovering what they're playing next. Mm -hmm. And there might be moments where the musician's kind of just walking down the street. Nothing profound is happening, but it's peaceful and you're there and you're present and now and it's just it's it's a time. And then your mind can kind of drift and go on its own journey. And then five minutes will go by and all this beautiful stuff has been going on. And then you find yourself in this new place and you're like, what is this magic that's happening? I think it's the, per the, the perception and the experience of the individual, what journey it takes them on as what's going on with the journey of the musician rendering the music. So I feel like it's about someone to, uh, that can take you on a journey, like a shaman. You know, Vilayat uh, Kansa, my father, uh, many, you know, great musicians, they're, they're like journeymen, you know, they take you on these like shamanic kind of uh, uh, discoveries, you know? And that's what the music does, and it's different. It's always different. Um, that's, I mean, I, there's, so how can you talk about music, right? But that's that's something that came to my mind. You know, um, in early 90s, uh, uh, we were in San Francisco, and uh, we'd gone to Khan Saab's house uh, for dinner as a young kid, and Malibar uh, Khan uh, had presented above with this uh, recording of his uh, from Basim Bukhari. Uh, from from Germany, and uh, I kid you not, uh, when we came home, just the beginning phrase of that recording, just the beginning phrase, it would make us all students listen, sit there and say repeatedly, say, get that, understand that feeling, understand. And so I'm being very candid with you. I was very young, and and. And, and I still don't think I'm mature enough to really understand what he was talking about musically. It was beautiful. It is beautiful, no doubt. I thought it was beautiful back then also. But repeatedly when Abba would talk about, like, just almost put that on loop and say, Suno is good, Suno is good. Understand what he's doing. Try, see, get the feeling. See the way, see the source, see the tone, see the feeling, see the truth, see this, you know, see that. Beyond a certain point, it was like, okay, fine. Yeah, you know, I, I'm being very candid about the whole thing, you know, it's like, okay, fine, you know, we get it, we get it. But to what you just spoke about, uh, um, being in tune, one or two or three moments in your life, you know, uh, where they felt that, because at, at, at the playing field that they were thinking on was just, just another world. So we, at, from our level, uh, they were always in tune, uh, uh, you know, uh, and and because they were in that moment uh, when it came, they had ego, they had uh, all kinds of issues. Uh, but when it came down to music, when it came down to actually that instrument and them that extension, everything was out the door. Ego, love, spirituality, music, uh, performance, me, you, nothing. It 
was just one big connection and it had all of it and it had nothing in it um again these are all very sort of uh, you know uh, spacey uh, <laughs> talks to have and, and and it's out there kind of stuff it, it is what it, it is did your father talk i mean just going back to the tune thing my father a lot of times in life would say things in a situation that wasn't very nice and wasn't going very well that uh the situation was out of tune so going back to what tune means yeah 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 absolutely yeah, so, like so, abba would say like bada besura hai and he didn't mean to to say like he's actually besura in that sense this is just the moment is besura you know uh it's it's yeah. not connecting it's not uh, um you know i had a very uh, interesting uh, conversation with i don't know if i told you this rambai but um, maybe i have we discussed this uh, with zakir pai one time um and i think he said it the most beautifully uh, and he summed it up really well um he had a concert in uh, punjab and uh, he was doing a tabla solo and and uh, i was fortunate enough to be listening to him and in, in that um so he plays this thing that that he plays uh, this shivji thing with the dambru from the left hand and the shank from the right hand <clears throat> and it was uh, one of those moments where when he started playing that uh, the shank sound he established the dumru and the shank sound that was coming from the right hand was absolutely like it was coming out of a blowing instrument it wasn't like it was coming out from a strike instrument it was just one note that was coming it was it was a miracle you know it was a miracle and and uh, about 10 15 20 seconds into it everyone started clapping and um, and he told them like stop and he did it again and and uh, it didn't happen exactly the same way because that was that magical moment that happened like that i have experienced many subtle crazy moments with abba at home or in concerts because i was constantly with him that these moments that seem superhuman almost they seem like miracles and and just from the way they tune the instrument or uh, from the note where they're getting a resonation of another note coming which just doesn't correlate just as it makes sense how that happens um to many many things you know like you hear stories that he played the sapartha and where the, the string got loose it was almost a, a note and a half but he managed and came completely on so you know things like that um, to very obvious things to to very subtle things where they just connect with your heart uh, and you get that sort of feeling around you so after the concert i was talking to zakir bhai i was like zakir bhai how did this happen so he said oh god does it and everything I'm like you know how he is in his in his charming uh, non committal way he was sort of explaining the whole thing and i said you know zakir bhai if it happened if god was doing it why doesn't he do it through me <laughs> why doesn't he do it through everyone why does it happen through select people so no i really want to know what is it and he said something just so simple and beautiful he said you need to understand and love your instrument if you have that level of understanding and that amount of connection with your instrument once in a while you're able to do things that are just out of this world and 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 people like ustad ali akbar khan sahab and ustad bilal khan sahab and all these other great ustad amir khan sahab and so many other uh, musicians like this they lived on that plane constantly you know they lived on that plane that's very very it's very beautiful beautifully said that's so. it well you're muted rambai rambai oh, sorry sorry just to <laughs> just to ensure <laughs> We're not on, actually, at all. Not at all. <laughs> no sound. Forget about you. No tune. No noise. <laughs> okay. So I I would like to share a couple of uh, photos which uh, um, I have gathered. Um, just give me a moment. um i think uh, hidayat bhai you are talking about uh, this uh, small sitar uh, isn't it um, mm. so i i i got one similar photo of ustad ali oh. khan sahab also with, with a small sarod 
so we just uh, start I a band diet think... where we just play small instruments. Sorry, Ram. <laughs> <laughs> the small band, the small instrument band. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So, so I made a caption: the greatest musicians with the smallest instruments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We actually have, we actually have. Uh, I don't know if it's that sarod, but we have a sarod <clears throat> that's the same kind of size. It's in a glass case at on in, right. in my father's room, and he learned on that sarod. He said he learned darbari on that sarod from wow. his father. Yeah, he says oh. that's the same small sarod that I learned first when I was a little child. I mean, these are these these stories where you're like, okay, well, <laughs> did you really? <laughs> Because man, what am I doing wrong? <laughs> like you learned it, or you like knew how to play that raga fully at that time. You realized it, or you just had a lesson. And <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> right. So this is another very rare photograph where we can see four uh, legends of Indian classical instrumental music, Indian classical music, I should say. Stavali um, Barkhan Sahab with Pandit Nikhil Banerjee. Uh, beside him and Ustad Vilayat Khasab and Ustad Imrat Khasab. Must be in some informal gathering. Cig cigarette uh, in hand. Classic cigarette yeah. in hand. Almost looks like Nikhil's giving, it almost looks like Nikhil Banerjee is smoking. Want to smoke? Want to smoke? You know, uh, uh, again, talking about, uh, you know, the, 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 you make these musicians into, uh, I, don't, I don't know what, I don't know. they had so much fun together. They hung out and they had so much fun together. They did things that we don't really do. I mean, honestly, they uh, they were having fun. And I don't know why that's lost and why music has to be so strict and so, um, like, you're, like, you're almost in a straight jacket caught up. I mean, there's nobody, you're not chilling with music anymore. Uh, and these guys were, I mean, look at that picture. It says, uh, it says the whole thing. I mean, it's, you can feel that, the, that just that environment over there, they're having fun. <laughs> You're right. No, I mean, Baba used to say things like Pandit Nikhil Banerjee or with um, you know, uh, uh, Pandit, like, uh, like, like all these great like tabla players and, and musicians, they would get in a car and they would drive across India to like do concerts and tours and stuff like that. Just wild bunch of people doing all these things. But but we only hear these serious stories to keep us in line. And I, I feel like the the... I almost feel like sometimes the never ending kind of um, holding you down, the heights are so high, it's so colossal, it never, you know, blah, 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 all this kind of stuff that's so intense all the time. It almost can make you lose uh, confidence and make you feel scared to try and to do things and become your own. That I feel like maybe sometimes is too much, but who am I to say? But at the same time, I think that, that it's supposed to just, it should keep you humbled, keep you conscious, keep you aware, but not to the point where, but also build you up. They'd also say things to build you up in ways. And it's really important for all people to understand that you also need to have be built up and have confidence and be confident in yourself and your playing. And these stories are so beyond, they're almost mythological. Um, they are, they really are. But yeah. you have to find the humanity in these things and, and, and also use those as guiding, you know, uh, you know, lighthouses, guiding lights, but don't get too far into it because, uh, you know, then then it's just like it's it's unachievable, and that's another philosophical kind of thing. So, next picture. So, uh, next picture. as Hidad Bhai was, <laughs> um, as Hidad Bhai was saying, uh, the the great musicians of that era used to, you know. Uh, go together, uh, go out for fun, and most importantly, they used to listen to each other. Now we are in a culture where one musician is performing, and once it is over, they are packing up and going home, and not they don't have the patience to listen to the other the other musicians, and to give the mutual have the mutual respect among each other mostly, right? So uh, in case you remember some anecdotes, some interesting stories uh, among the, those great musicians, if you could share. I mean, uh, I, I told you about uh, the way we got Talima with uh, the energy of the recording also. Now, Alima, you remember, um, uh, you also played there, uh, Abbas, uh, 70th birthday in Calcutta. 
people asked him uh, yeah uh, yeah people asked him uh, what do you want so he said there's only one thing um, uh, i want to listen to uh, aluda and and uh, ramba i think your microphone's on and, and it's making hidayat's microphone quiet for some reason yeah i'm muting yeah. mine as well sorry hidayat go go ahead yeah, so I mean, on his for his 70th birthday, um, the, the only person that he wanted to celebrate and listen to was uh, Ali Abba Hassab. And And um, I, I mean, there's so many of, of uh, uh, these uh, stories. I mean, um, that uh, uh, of, uh, of mutual love, desire, respect, inspiration. Um, and I guess when, you know, when you are... Uh, when you've reached a certain stature in your in your own space, then you're open uh, uh, to your insecurities are gone. You don't you're not an insecure person. The reason why we uh, don't listen to other musicians because we are insecure about our own music. That's why we don't appreciate others. These people were so secure in their skin that they loved. Uh, um, and and if somebody played a better than or somebody played a better uh, approach to a thing it wasn't something that they went home feeling like what happened over there no it was something that they felt inspired and and the reason why uh, if you hear their duets why they're magical is because the they're having this amazing conversation and they're getting inspired by every phrase every chikari every stroke that one other uh, plays, and you can hear it in their voices. You can hear it in the subjects of the music, how they're moving on. Uh, sometimes it's a, a movement of the same subject. Sometimes it's a, a reply of the same subject It's a, a, or a change of that atmosphere. But it is always in context. And, and they're such fabulous musicians themselves. That they have zero insecurities. They're sitting there and just opening their hearts to each other. Yeah, we used to, we used to, um, my father had a tape collection. He didn't listen to music very often in the years where I was uh, around him. Um, maybe he did when he was younger, but not a lot. And But he had a tape collection and inside were some of the light concepts tapes is dubbed. There weren't even albums. I don't know what where he got them. He always had these random uh, tapes that were just like handwritten and they weren't like, you know, with covers and all that stuff. And we'd listen to, you know, like Barkat Ali, uh, like um, Tumri music, yeah. and we'd listen to, uh, and I, I fell in love with that. Um, whatever was in my father's little tape collection, it was so bizarre. Um, and one of them was <clears throat> Vilayat Khan Saab, might have been with your with your older brother um, as well, but but I'm not I'm not sure. But it was a rag mala, and I remember just finding it so interesting because it wasn't like I had heard before. And we would talk about these things, you know, and he would say, and it was one of the nights that we'd listen to music, just him and I, uh, which was which was kind of few and far between. Um, and he just said, yeah, this is this is this different this different style of doing this kind of playing and this ragamala and, and, and notice this and all these kinds of things that are happening. And we just <clears throat> I just remember it <clears throat> kind of blowing my mind because I just wasn't used to that approach. And he said something to me like the light concept is my brother. You know, and he was he was the king of the sitar. In his hands, he had the complete control of that instrument. You know, and um, <clears throat> I just remember him making that comment to me, and it it was. Uh, yeah, I I <clears throat> I wish I could have had more memories and more times of listening to these recordings with him and talking. And so many, you know, you try to think of every question you can ask your ailing father, who you know, it was my father was sick for many years and. Uh, I, I, of course, so many questions have come up now, you know, and I knew they would, and I tried to think of them all, but I couldn't. Um, but there's just so many things I would ask him about, about different aspects and life. And so, Alam Bhai, if I can ask, um, uh, the part of, uh, you know, growing as musician are three, like, first is Sikhya, Dikhya, Parikhya. First, learn, learning, listening to others, other musicians, and doing riyas. So, uh, Ustad Ali Abul Khan Sahib encouraged you to listen to other musicians other than the, you named Ustad Barkat, Barkat Ali Khan Sahib and Vilayat Khan Sahib. Yeah, yeah, no, that, that was just the an other, example of a tape that I remember listening other, to. 
spark right. it out on sub. Yeah, but no, I mean he he said, um, yeah, go ahead and, and listen. And uh, he mentioned other musicians uh, for for in his opinion, Raga would be kind of in line with what he thought and different this is and that's and. He left it to me pretty much. I mean, what was told to him when he was young was that, you know, he was only allowed to listen to Western classical when it came on the radio in my heart. Uh, and he was only and he was allowed to listen to certain musicians, obviously, if they were at concerts and, and various things. But he didn't want the raga to be um, um, taught in a different way or misinterpreted. So Raga, from the Garana standpoint, wanted that to be strong, the foundation to be strong. And I believe that that should be strong before you start grabbing this is and that's from everybody's different interpretations. Appreciation is key, is very important to the to the um, evolution of your own playing and surpassing any limitations you might have, right? But uh, but um, raga should be you should know if you're going into a different version of the raga than what you learned. Let's put it that way. You should know that you're doing that. Be conscious of it. Otherwise, this is and that's and you don't know where anything is coming from, right? So um, needs to be strong. Needs foundation, to be yeah. yeah, yeah, but that's what I that that's that's um he but I listen to Vilayat Kansab, Nikhil Banerjee, Ravi Ji. I mean, I, I listen to um uh, you know, Amjad. I listen to all kinds of different players, and I appreciate greatly the Riyaz, the Talim, the uh, Sadhana, the lifetime commitment that these musicians have made and the magic that they all can unlock in a certain way in their own unique ways <clears throat> but you know foundation is key so whenever i felt like i was you know getting too far into well actually i never listened to other things too much it was always mainly my father but when i did um i just didn't really k listen so much for the raga as much as i did for the just the music just the music approach towards music Right. Yeah. And uh, you were talking about that Basant Mukhari recording of Ustad Ali Akbar Khan Sahib, which uh, Abba forced you to you all to listen. Sorry. First few, first, first few minutes. <laughs> but I think... <laughs> was that artistic sound of... Was that the... Sorry, Rambai. Was that the artistic sound of Sarod album? Yeah. You remember? Yeah. yeah. That's so weird because that album... Yeah. And I don't know if he said this to your father when he gave it to him. But my father told me that that was the only recording or his favorite recording of him of himself because he felt that the Sorod sound was properly captured. And and I mean, it's not my first choice. I, I love it, but it's not my first choice of the best recordings playing wise because I have so many that I love so much that have formed the way that I think and play. But that recording, he said a number of times, that was the best capturing of the Sir sound of Sarod. I'm still trying to figure it out exactly, but anyway. Yeah, that's exactly it. That's exactly it. Uh, so I don't know if he told your dad and your father was yeah. like, okay, so this is, you know, or if he naturally was like gravitating towards that recording because it's weird that they both had this thing about that recording, you know? Yeah. Probably it was natural because great people think alike, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Hidat Bhai, uh, if I can ask, uh, as you uh, shared before, like uh, above, uh, used to ensure that you listen to other great ustads, uh, like Ustad Mustafa Hussain Khan Sahib, Fayaz Khan Sahib, Abdul Karim Khan Sahib's recording. Uh, who are the who are, who are the musicians to whom you have listened the most in Abbas encouragement? Oh, I mean, uh, and, uh, which which aspects, if I can ask you, like which aspects of which musicians? Uh, so, uh, so again, uh, so foundation is very, very important to him, uh, and and I think uh, the 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 thing problem, uh, the reason why gharanas are very important, and it is because of the foundation. So once you have that foundation laid in a proper way, it is very important to explore and understand. So uh, like when Abba would start us uh, teaching any rag. Uh, he would always uh, teach us the rag from his perspective, our foundation, and then he would always relate it to other people's. And, 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 and it wasn't like they're wrong and we're right. It was different approaches. And if you do not understand the approach completely of a certain rag, then you don't know how what you are doing, also, your, which is unique to yourself. So it was very important for him to sort of connect with that. Also, um, uh, 
it might be really helpful for um, uh, younger uh, musicians. Um, I mean, I I think it's it's very insightful. Um, is that he would say that if you if you listen to the same rag by different 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 musicians and different thought process, even if you take a, a common rag like Yaman, right? Uh, you take that and you listen to it from very different dharanas and different uh, approaches. So one day, if you play, if you're playing seven days, seven concerts in a back to back in the same place, and you play Yaman every day, by having those different approaches, you can approach the rag in a very different way every time. Now, this does not mean you copying other musicians. This means you imbibing their thought process and delivering it with your strong foundation. So, which was very prevalent in his music. I mean, influence of Ayaz Khan Sahab, uh, influence of uh, uh, Abdul Karim Khan Sahab, Rajab Ali Khan Sahab, uh, and, and so many different more maestros, Barkat Ali Khan Sahab, uh, uh, in the Tumri movements, and Ashik Ali Khan Sahab, and, and Wahid Khan Sahab, you know, uh, apart from his own uh, 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 father and grandfather and everything, was so prevalent. And, and, uh, he would uh, also like if he's doing Nikhat to Gandhar, he's he's approaching the music from a certain sensibility from Gandhar to Pancham. He would approach it in a very different sensibility, or he was doing certain set of tans which were very much like Rajab Ali Khan Sahab. Then the next set of tans would be very much like inspired by not like inspired by Omkar Nath Thakur um, or you know things like that. So which made his music uh, uh, very vast in 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 uh in dimension and in in, in approach and everything and uh, so that's the that was sort of how but again the the foundation was very important um uh, and and all these uh, stepping out and and exploring other uh dharanas and everything i think most people do it very prematurely um, uh, they, they're not willing to put the time, uh, the students are not willing to put the time and the effort that needs for you to come to a certain place where, again, using that word foundation, your personality, your DNA is completely formed. Once that is formed, then you can do whatever you want to do. I mean, today as musicians, we're doing fusion music, we're collaborating with this, that, everything, you know, we're doing all kinds of things. But I mean, we're doing music that inspires us, we're doing music that pays our bills. Um, but at the end of the day, we're doing this after our DNA has been set, for the most part. I think that was your question, right, Ramdai? Uh, listening yeah. to the music, yeah. <laughs> yeah. How how to get inspired by other musicians and which aspects of the other musicians, you know, he ensured that you listen and imbibe. Um, you know. Uh, um, had I advised, uh, did your father ever talk about um, his outlook, his perspective, playing music, being a musician when he was younger compared to when he was older? Or did you have you thought, uh, if he didn't say anything, did you have you thought about that yourself about how that could have changed possibly? <clears throat> I mean, uh, he did talk about it, and in Abbas' case, it's uh, very visible also because I mean, from uh, from an instrumental style, how he changed his style to the Gaiki Young, uh, then also how he changed uh, the tone of his sitar, the structure of his sitar, the the the, the sitar itself. I mean, from seven string to six string to Gandhar Pancham and all of that stuff. So all of those things are um, uh, sort of very visible, huge things. But he was very conscious about. Uh, evolution in music. He was very conscious about um, uh, not falling into um, uh, a certain, uh, I'm trying to see the right word for it. Uh, trap. Trap. Not a trap also. It's, uh, uh, it's, you know, a lot of times actors do that, like uh, Al Pacino plays a certain part. Uh, um, there's a word for it which is not coming to my head right now but he he wanted to break the mold and he wanted to get out of that mold and he wanted to evolve into the next uh and a lot of times he would say that 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 journey i went in a direction which didn't which didn't work out so i changed my direction 
And he always said that it, nothing, nothing I say is etched in stone. It's what I believe in right now. And as I evolve, it will change with my thought process will change. And, and I'm willing to constantly keep on changing and I'm wanting to constantly keep on evolving. So he's, yeah, he, he really spoke about that. And he wanted us to sort of think in those lines also. What about, but what also, what about, um, you know, for us, these are the old generation, but they were actually the revolution, one of the revolutionary generations. And they were actually the young generation, in my opinion of, of how, I mean, how, it, that's a that's a debatable thing or a subjective how how much you think you can push music and how far traditional music can go before it becomes something other than it what other than traditional so what was his thoughts on um on the the older generations and like how, what what did that mean to him you know the his maestros uh things like that his his older generation what what, what was his thoughts on that if you ever talked about it History was, I think, very important to him um, because he feels that, that if you didn't know your history, you didn't know where you were coming from. And if you don't know where you're coming from, you don't know where you're going. Um, so it was very, very, very important to him. History was very important. Um, uh, and it's it was fundamental in his growth. Uh, so if you, um, if you know one rag, then that's what you know. And the second rug, you don't know, you think you've created it, you think you've done something with it, you know. Um, but if you know, once you know 10 rugs, then you understand that so much more. If you know 100 rugs, then you understand that so much more. I'm just trying to be a little pedestal about it. But yeah, history was uh, very, very important to us. Yeah. And I'm, as I'm sure uh, how, uh, your father was uh, uh, the same way, or was he not? Um, yeah, I mean, everything was always related to, to my grandfather. It was just like, it, it, and anything that's done is, is, is just about grandfather. You know, I mean, that's, that's what it is. I mean, he even would say, um, when anyone would pay him a compliment in life, uh, that he was just a messenger of his father. It's literally, we literally wrote it on his tombstone. He was a messenger of his father. And then we said a, a number of other things that are also written on the tombstone, but that was his, he really never, at least outwardly and told us, and I feel that he didn't uh, go into the whole, I did this, I'm this, I'm these kinds of things. Whenever he related it to himself, he would talk about a more spiritual thing or um, aspect where he would say that when he played music, and I don't know if he always thought this, but later on in life, that he would leave his body and become one with the audience. He said he only kind of came back into himself when he heard people clapping at the end of it. And he realized, oh, oh yeah, here I am. But he was a, more of like a channel, you know? And then anybody said, comedy is my father's music. You know, it's my father's mm -hmm. music. It's my father, it's my father, it's my father. So that was super, you know, um, strong. What he talked about when he was younger um, was, that I love my father's old uh, recordings from the 50s and things like that, all India radio recordings and, and whatnot. And uh, I find them just so amazing because, you know, he, he, was, he was at a level of technical abilities. He was young. He was, you know, ready to, to he, the, the world was his oyster, whatever you want to say. He told me, ah, yeah, I was macho back then. Mm -hmm. He says, oh, yeah, macho. And he talked about that in class. Like, you guys are all too macho. Stop trying to be all like, you know, this much. Try to be all this thing all the time. I think that's something the old age kind of also uh, gives you is a, a thing like, all right, settle down. I'm 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 playing for what is what I've gathered, the accumulation of my entire life. I've gathered that this is the most important thing to me right now. And I'm going to be playing that. And then to tie into that same thought. I used to talk about oh Manj Kamaj and all these ragas that I found so romantic and beautiful. And he'd say to me, Alam, when I'd play it back, you know, and I'd just be playing sometimes phrases from his recordings, right? Because I was so enchanted by them and I wanted him to be excited about it too and relate and talk to me. Oh, I made this line like this. And I thought like this is what was going on when I was making this stuff. Because it's like a different... It's like a different world for him being at the age he was now from when the recording was made. And to me, I'm hearing it all for the first time. 
and I was just so entranced by it. So let's talk about these things. And I'd be playing these things, hoping I get a reaction out of him. And maybe it was internal. We didn't share it a lot of time. Just mm -hmm, mm -hmm. he said, Alam, you're playing for um, the girl in the audience. He's like, you should play for God. And when he said that to me, I was like, you know, I still think about it, you know, whether it was a girl or what, but like that romantic kind of these things that was, and maybe that was just that night that he was thinking it. But I think in general, when you get older, it's more of this, you know, spiritual approach. It's always there, but even more so when you're older. And for him saying that it was kind of like, yeah, I was playing all this stuff. I wouldn't easily write it off just to sum it up in that way. You're playing for something like that. Cause I find it, um, very beautiful, very moving, and it's formed a lot of the way that I play. But that was his kind of, you know, way to break it down later on in life, that you're playing for this on a very human level, but I want you to play on, on that level. So take it for what it, you know, it, to take what you will from it. But it's like there's different ways of thinking about it too. So, But Alambai, like, uh, I think... All these aspects come with the age and experience. And as a teenager, probably that is that aspect attracted you more. Probably at that age, you will also same thing. You will, you will also say same thing to your your son. Who knows? I don't know. I love. I think both. I think both of approaches are incredible. And you know, and I I'm, I'm I I love that st that age of his playing. I love the older age of his playing, which is what he as which is the age in which he taught me. So I think that it's important to see the whole thing, and you can see the kind of uh you can see, you can see the age and the growth as just a human being in the music you can see that story be told through their music the fantastic thing that is coming out of this session is uh the, they were ever evolving musicians and uh, with their age their music evolved none of their concerts even though were, they were playing the same raga were same why why i said that as a as trap uh, with with an intention. Once artists, musicians find a particular trick or particular way, they are getting commercial success, uh, recognition, fame, name. They stick to that for years, that are decades after decades. The same tihai, same pattern, same laikari, same movements going after you know years after years, and that is the current trend. Unfortunately, that, I, I mean these great musicians were great, probably because of their impromptu, impromptu nature of their music. Sometimes like you know their success rate might not be the of this at the same level every time but when they created the you know that magical moment you know that is like you know that's they what i'm trying chances to they take chances they're risky yes, they yeah. do they dove off the cliff right just dive you know we don't fix anything beforehand we take the we just dive take the plunge yeah. you know and and it's, uh, so there, again, there are, there are multiple approaches to music and, and nothing is wrong, uh, nothing is right. Um, uh, playing uh, pre-composed music or somewhat pre-composed music, uh, it's, it's certain personality type, they like it, there's an audience that connect with it, everything. Um, the way Abba explained to us uh, was um, um, music is a journey. A performance is a journey. Uh, it's a spiritual connect. Um, and in that, uh, if you don't try, sometimes when you try something, sometimes you fail. And there's beauty in the failing also. Uh, there's sometimes you uh, succeed. And there's beauty in that as well. Um, it's not about, this is not about perfection. It's, uh, it's like an oil painting versus a photograph. Photograph capture, captures it to a perfection. Oil painting captures the imagination. Um, so it's a two different uh, uh, approach uh, approaches. And, and uh, yes, in the oil painting, there are brush marks that were not intended or something. But there's just the, the complete picture is a certain way. A photograph is a photograph, uh, digitally perfect and, and everything. And I think, um, you know, uh, a lot of uh, today's even... Uh, just going a little off topic, uh, but fusion music uh, today's and, and, and or um, crossover music or whatever you may call it, is, is, is one thing that I personally feel is, is lacking. Um, it, well, the reason why it's lacking that, that magic is because we are stuck to these BPMs. We're doing a song 
in D and we're doing it at 120 BPMs. Now, if you hear the older rock bands also uh, and everything, uh, the BPMs were, were sort of uh, um, measured by the heart rate. Uh, so to say, it's uh, you're feeling energized, you, your music went up, you're feeling relaxed, your heart rate is slow, your music was playing that. Um, the tuning, why are we forced to tune our instruments to 440? Uh, it's losing that that connect and that magic because the timber of the instrument, uh, whether it's uh, a sitar, the sarod, the weather, these are acoustic instruments that all these little things matter. And, and if you listen to the timber of it, then sometimes you want to play it a little high, sometimes you want to play it a little lower. lower. And with if you sort of in tune with all of these things, then the music comes out a certain way. But the moment you're sort of putting these uh, guidelines, and again, these, and I'm talking strictly for Indian classical music. I'm not talking for different, uh, this thing. They work different strokes for different folks, different places. So I'm not condemning anything. Uh, I'm just saying for Indian classical music, if you sort of listen to the timber of your, if you're playing a concert in New York in this temperature, obviously the instrument's gonna react a certain way. And today, the same day if I'm playing in Calcutta, no, the, the humidity, the temperature, the, the, the oil of the singar, you know, all of that will play into, uh, 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 you know, into that feel. So that's uh, a lot of the, these great maestros um, were conscious of these things. Amazing aspect. Um, other than the music, they have lived music as, as it is said musicians don't do music they leave music so how they have seen music in different aspects of life as i have heard stories about badigula malik Khan sahab whenever he, he was in a garden and one butterfly just went off like that then he's singing a tan he's visualizing the entire nature as an orchestra so how uh, if you could just share some experiences how they lived music in other aspects of life while doing other things, how they have lived music. Alam bhai, if you could, if I can ask this question to you. Um, I think that it goes back to the being in tune thing, right? It's, um, and father, my father would relate things to purity of heart. Um, he would say that this music makes you a better person. Uh, makes you a compassionate and loving person. And if you have any, you know, if your heart is impure, then this music won't fully be realized in you. Take it for what you will, you know, but, uh, but, 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 but he would talk about that a lot that music will make you. And I, I noticed that too, you know, I mean, if I'm in a terrible mood or I'm stressed out, or I'm worried about so many things, um, if I play music, I notice the medicinal qualities of it these days more than I did before when I was young and I wanted everything to be, you know, moody and uh, intense and it's the artist and, you know, this is music is dark or this music is, you know, filled with, with, with sorrow or, or whatever or joy or whatever. But I mean, nowadays I notice more like how I feel after playing the music. Um, and I find that I'm my best self um after having played music or having the slate been cleaned washed washed away with whatever i was dealing with after listening to music and music is one of the first things at least for me that um resets that it can immediately just whatever the stress is and those kinds of things are um if i let it in then it just it brings me back to my back to home back to a, the the kind of way i should be living and i want to live my, you know, the, the the kindness, the warmth, the the acceptance, the understand, letting go, all those kinds of things. It kind of brings me back to that. So I think he spoke about those kinds of things a lot, um, and sometimes he would relate it to other things that are just, uh, you know, we're sitting in an airport and and we're waiting for something and we're bored, and he says, "How many variations can you come up with three notes?" You know. Uh, the, the test the test for a you know a great musician or one of the things is 
how many ways they can bring a different approach and feel with those three notes. And, uh, you know, you could play a bunch or, but you could just take these three and, and not have them be boring and not have them be repetitive and all these kinds of things. So he'd say stuff like that sometimes, but more the, the main kind of teaching that he would talk about that and then relating it to life is, uh, you know, about it tuning you, making you a more loving, kind, better person than you will be, the world would be better place, all these kinds of things. Um, but, you know, uh, he, he would also, yeah, I mean, that, 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 that's the, 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 the main, the main thing um, that I can think of right now. Mute. Yeah, <laughs> Hiranda, if you could tell in the same aspect how, uh, it, you know, exactly what Alam Bhai said. I mean, I can... Uh, uh, really, he covered it. I mean, I, um, uh, he covered it very well, uh, very eloquently. And uh, from from uh, all of it, uh, really, honestly, my, what am I going to add to it? I mean, it, it did that's a that's pretty beautiful true. job. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, but, you know, yeah. that's... Uh, so this is... So I'd like to... Okay. So sometimes, uh, so this is what uh, I think both our fathers uh, approach and, and they taught us this, that when somebody says something very nice, it's good to just say va and enjoy what they said. <laughs> you don't always have to add to it. <laughs> Any memories? Uh that you have uh, when uh, Ustad Ali Akbar Khan and Ustad Vilayat Khan both met, probably visiting each other's house or, you know, I, I was there in one uh, event, as you said, 75th birthday celebration of uh, uh, Ustad Vilayat Khan where Ustad Ali Akbar Khan performed in town hall. It was, I think, 2003, January 2004, January 2003. Um, any other, uh, you know, memories of they meeting with each other you know, I think Alam Bhai was sharing one, uh, you know, incident. Uh, yeah. They do it in Berkeley when, when you were you were toddler, probably. Yeah. So if you could share I'm that. Trying, I'm trying to yeah. remember. I'm trying to remember them together, and I don't have many memories to be honest. I don't know Hidayat Bhai if you remember. I I, I rem remember distinctly the birthday celebration um, in India, the performance in in, in Calcutta and uh, and in NCPA and Mumbai, Bombay. Um, but uh, other than that, and I mean stories of their duets and 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 all that. And but other than that, I don't remember like household visits. Did they did they have them in our in our age in our time? I don't remember. Our time, I think they were very far and few. Um, they, I remember going to uh, uh, your house in San Francisco a few times. Um, I remember Khasab coming to uh, Princeton, Jersey once. Um, um, uh, then if, with uh, Saad Inayat Khan uh, Foundation Award, when uh, Bahai had given those interactions. Uh, and, 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 but I think in 78, there are lots of pictures uh, from um, visit a buzz visit in, in in california in 78 they spent a whole bunch of time together and then obviously um then, then there's these stories that go back to bombay um where uh um, they were all sort of uh growing up and, and struggling artists at that time and and they would all hang out uh regularly Balada uh, Ali Badan Mohan, Abba a painter, I'm a Hussain, and, and so they would sort of all uh, be hanging out on a regular basis. Um, and and so, I mean, but not during our time. Um, no. Yeah, I can't, I can't, I can't recall any of them for some reason. I'm not sure, but I, I definitely in India and I, and uh, when hearing stories of when they played their, 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 uh, Jugal Bundy together in, in, in California, and my mother also telling me how. When she was, she must have been in her 20s, she had picked up your father, maybe your brother, maybe you, uh, yeah. and yeah. driven you, driven everyone from Los Angeles to the, <laughs> to the Bay Area. Due to the Bay Area. I don't think she was with my father at that time. I don't think they were together at that time. But No, I mean, and, and I was also three years old, so, so I don't, uh, I have... Uh, you don't remember that? <laughs> no, actually, I did. 
<laughs> and during that drive, uh, we were taught uh, make mala. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the composition. <laughs> On a little sitar. <laughs> On the little sitar, back of the station wagon. <laughs> three octave tons. Three octave tons. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, um, but that, it, it was always a great time. It was obviously, the, you know, uh, when, when Vilaya Kansab would come and they would play those concerts, um, it was people were very excited to hear them play together uh, in, in, in California. So, and, you know, I... They they did they all used to run around together when they were younger obviously uh, and and even later on there's that famous photo of them cooking in the kitchen right How, did you did your father did your father like to cook a lot oh, love to love to yeah. cook so yeah, yeah same thing right and, and there I I wonder what they were cooking I'm sure that was delicious I'm sure they drank scotch and smoked cigarettes and and did all the good things right so <laughs> most definitely did <laughs> lots of good things <laughs> good food good drink yeah. All those, all the fun all, stuff. All, 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 and 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 so much more. Um, you know, these are these are personalities that had so much to offer. We could honestly, we could spend hours and hours, and hours. we spend a lifetime thinking and talking about them. So uh, to uh, to uh, really uh, cover uh, their uh, lives in in one session. I mean, we've been talking for an hour and forty plus minutes. We could go on and on, but um, uh, but you know. Um, they were really uh, um, amazing, uh, amazing people, and we are so grateful for them uh, to be. Uh, we're so grateful and blessed as, as Alan Pai started this whole thing. Um, that that I don't know. I believe that if you believe in past life, that did something really interesting and good to have been born to uh, uh, such uh, families and, and such uh, great people, and and. And I think I say this for Alam Bhai also, and then I definitely say it for myself. Um, it's a very humbling, it's a very blessed feeling, um, um, and 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 it requires a lot of prayers and blessings of everyone also. So um, uh, and and Ram Bhai, you said something in the beginning is the the torch bearers of uh, this uh, lineage. Um, the torch bearers we shall become hopefully someday if our music is strong enough and that will only happen with the blessings and prayers of all uh, the music world and, and all of you all um, but uh, the what these artists have created nobody they don't need a torch bearer or they don't need uh, any kind of uh, support or anything or media or or any one of us saying anything i mean they've done their job uh, they've left this world with everything and um, we're just uh, spending some time and, and uh, enjoying time spending together and, and uh, reminiscing their memory absolutely absolutely um, but i think today's society society and we all together we have some responsibilities to remember and um work live with their work and make this uh, world a better place uh, so that uh, there should be some social responsibility from government from from the media from everyone but if no one else is doing their job at least a couple of us should you know try to do this and i am extremely grateful to you as you have agreed to come to this um, today's episode and i think this is the just the start hidal bhai has been uh, with ICMC for some time now. Salam so, bhai, I think this is just the start and uh, ICMC it's needs your presence. Yeah. It's a cult. Once you're in, you can't leave. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get it tatted on my arm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Rambai. Thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure talking with you both. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it's my favorite subject. Yeah. And we will have a few more episodes on it. So based on your convenient time, I will again poke you both for this. So my, my thanks to everyone uh, who are watching. We are getting a lot of comments. Um, and thanks for being with us today. Uh, and once the subject is Ustad Vilayat Khansab and Ustad Ali Khansab, then the entire world will be with us. Thank you.
Thanks. Take care, uh, everybody. Thank you so much. Lovely to connect with you after years, man. You, 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 should, you, uh, you too, man. I wish we could see each other uh, in person and hang out. So hopefully sooner than later, let's yeah, and, and pray really for better days. It's been, it's been a while that both of us haven't connected. So you made this happen. So thank you so yeah. much. Yeah, thank you. Great to see you both. Stay safe, everyone. Take care. Thank you. Take care. Namaskar. Namaskar.